Hello. I'm going to take a look at SARS versus MERS versus COVID-19. Is COVID going to be over in two years like it was for SARS? Is it as bad as the other two? Are we going to just naturally outlive it? And will the government just take advantage of it anyways and keep pushing for their control agenda? So is COVID here to stay? Will it become COVID-20? Will there be more after that? COVID-21, COVID-22? Or is it just going to be gone in two years like other coronaviruses? So here is an interview between Dr. Zach Bush and Del Bigtree. And he talks about some interesting connections on the global level with viruses and pollution. One part of the interview, he speaks about other coronavirus illnesses having run their course in two years. Those would be SARS of 2002 and MERS of 2012. And he says the same will happen with SARS-CoV-2, which is COVID-19. So we'll just play through this, and then I'll have some remarks afterwards. The virus is going to move through the population, and just like every other coronavirus that we've seen that's that's resulted in, in widespread death, it's gone within two years. Uh, the first one was SARS, and it, no vaccine, no anything. We just developed herd immunity or adjustment, or the, the actual biologic pool for the production of that virus disappeared. And so that was gone. 2002, it happened. By 2003, it was gone. Uh, MERS happens 2012. By 2013, it's gone. No vaccines. And so these things are, are sweeping through the environment. And um, we make a news story out of a few of those, um, SARS, MERS, COVID. But if you look back to like 1976, when we saw this huge uptick in viral syndromes, uh, around 1976 is when we started to see species jumping viruses that were really starting to do weird things uh, genomically. We've had 12,800 you know, recorded new viruses in that time, and that's only the ones that we, we managed to record and find and, and categorize. There's probably you know, 100 fold that or 10,000 fold that or 10 million fold that that we haven't understood. The amount of genomic information in the atmosphere and soils and water systems is beyond our supercomputer power to, to an, analyze. And so when somebody comes along and says there's a new virus, my first thought is how the hell do you think that's new? Like what is the data that you're basing that on? Have you screened the genomics of, of the viruses on the planet before? And the answer is absolutely you can't. There's 10 to the 31 viruses in the air. There's 10 to the 31 viruses in this ocean water. There's 10 to the 30 viruses in this in the soils. And so we are surrounded. We are literally absorbing. We are breathing. We are through our skin, through our ears, through our eyes, through our systems. We are absorptive machines for genomic information since our origin and far beyond our origin was this genomic milieu that we float within. And so next winter, all of the physicians answering, knowing what you know, what are you going to do next fall? Are you going to vaccinate your patient? Because we know there's probably one more season where we'll see COVID in the environment. It takes two years for, for these coronaviruses to leave. By the way, know that this will be gone. Again, I said it earlier in the show, but it's very important America world. This virus will be gone by next summer. And when they come out with a vaccine next year, they're going to say that the vaccine eliminated the virus. That is physiologically impossible, that is scientifically impossible, and it has never happened with the previous coronaviruses that have circulated. So let us not be this easily duped, okay? Right. Another show, we can talk about whether I believe in vaccines or not. I think that there is an intelligent way we could go about understanding vaccines in the future. But since 1986, you know better than anybody else, right. we have not been testing for efficacy and safety of our vaccines. So are vaccines important? Is Zach against vaccines? No, Zach is fully for an intelligent microbiome informed new model for childhood immunity and vaccination. That's what I want people to sign on to. And so as an invitation on the tail end of this film will be an invitation to go to my website and, and, and sign a petition as a physician or scientist to sign up for healthy child immunity and intelligent vaccination. We need to bring the, the new science of the last 30 years to the microbiome 
to update our understanding of our relationship to the microbiome, and we need to stop seeing ourselves at war with it. We need to see ourselves as an ecologic member. Uh, we are a member within this microbial community. We are an ecosystem in and of ourselves, and we need to now advance the science of vaccination to understanding that exquisite role of microbes in our genome, microbes in our immune system responsiveness, microbes in our capacity to adapt and resist cancer and the chronic diseases that are truly threatening life on Earth. So regarding if SARS and MERS lasted only two years, I checked to see if this was true from Wikipedia. There's some basic knowledge about SARS, you know, um, I don't need to go look at some scientific things, this is just basic knowledge. Wikipedia has uh, references for it lasting from November 2002 to May 2003. So it was over in two years, that's it. There were three, sorry, there were 774 attributed deaths to SARS. For MERS, apparently it's still ongoing. In the Middle East, this is the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, with cases detected into 2020. There have only been 866 attributed deaths to MERS. I don't think COVID-19 will be over in two years. I think it might have been over in two years if the lockdown, isolation, and social distancing hadn't happened. But the flattening of the curve measures prolonged the virus the virus's life cycle into the population. Um, yeah, what do you think about that? From what Dr. Bush said, the coronavirus comes and goes, and it's not because of a vaccine that it's going to be gone. That happens on its own. Bush, Dr. Bush gives Three possibilities for the previous coronaviruses being over in two years. One is developing herd immunity. Two is adjusting to the virus. Three is the biological pool for the production of the virus disappears. If COVID-19 does go away despite the governments doing everything they can to delay that with lockdown and isolation, that won't stop the government and vaccine agenda from taking credit for saving lives. They won't be admitting the virus just faded away. It might not fade away either. SARS and MERS didn't really. Both haven't taken many lives despite no vaccine, lockdowns, isolations, etc. MERS is still being reported in the Middle East. Again, there were no lockdowns or isolation edicts from government. When you look at SARS and MERS, that didn't happen. And this is with the reported death rate of SARS and MERS being orders higher than COVID-19. Take a look at an example here. This one was made in uh, at the end of January, so before things started to kick up. And you can see MERS 35%, SARS 14 to 15, COVID-19 2.7%. Another one here showing how deadly is the disease. You have MERS again with the percentage. You have SARS and we have COVID estimated at one. So far 3.4 whenever this was done by Bloomberg. Seasonal flu 0.1. And here's another representation of the, the infected versus how many die, the infected versus how many die, the infected versus how many die. So SARS and MERS were more deadly, apparently, from the information we have about reports of SARS and MERS being the cause attributed to various deaths. But note that COVID-19 death rates are lower than reported as the death counts are inflated, provably. We just don't know what the real death rates are, as the governmental agencies have obfuscated that reality. But with the BS numbers we have, the case fatality rate is about 6.8% right now. 
So from 2 to 6.8, but again, our actual deaths are much lower because everything is being attributed to COVID-19. You die of dehydration from hospital neglect, you're a COVID-19 death. In the States, Dr. Burks admitted it. Heart attacks, kidney failure, or liver failure, whatever it was. Well, other countries are reporting that as heart attacks or kidney or liver failure or whatever it was. But in the States, they're taking a liberal approach and they're just putting, slapping everything as a COVID-19 death. So everything is being inflated. That's demonstrable. We have government officials admitting this. The CDC's own um, provisions or recommendations for how to code deaths demonstrate this. So it's, it's all inflated. I'm not sure COVID-19 will vanish, but it could. I think we will adjust to the virus, like MERS. And the original SARS-CoV from 2002. We don't really know if SARS-CoV, the original SARS from 2002, is really gone either. We are part microbiome with bacteria and viruses. We are a member within the microbial community. We shouldn't be looking at ourselves as being at war with it, like we are at war with viruses and COVID-19. This is an agenda pursued by Gates. Our savior Gates, with his final solution of vaccines to rid us of the viral threat. No matter what, the government will keep expanding its powers to surveil and control people's lives. This is a main event for the world changing. This current COVID-19 event is a major event. Changing to what? Socialism and a one world government. COVID-19 may be gone next summer, as Dr. Bush says, but the government will take credit to keep pushing the globalist agenda for world control. Let me know what you think. Have a good one. Peace.